So what is a component? Well, it turns out you've been using components a lot in Pipedream. If you've ever created a workflow, if you've ever set up a trigger, if you've ever used a pre-built action or a Node.js code step, you've used a component. So what does a component even look like? Well, when you create a Node.js code step, for example, we've already shown you kind of the basics of a component. If we open up a Node.js code step, we can see the very top line uses a function called define component, because that's what we're doing. We're defining a component for this particular step to run on. That's why there's a run property within our component. Now, how, how does this work with a pre-built action, for example? Let's look at the Shopify actions, and we can see there's a number here, and if there's a create order action, all these fields, how, where do all these come from? Well, if we go into the Pipedream public registry, we can see the list of all the apps that Pipedream supports with pre-built actions. So if we go to GitHub and look at the components directory, this is the list of every single component available for use on Pipedream in your workflows. You can see the list of the 700 plus apps that we support. So if we look up Shopify, for example, we will see the same exact corresponding action that you just saw to create an order right here within the code base. Now, some of these things look a little different. There is no define component function because we're literally defining a component within this object. And you'll see a few other keys like name, description, and the version, but a lot of these are also the same. There's a props section where we can define props like the line items, the customer ID, the billing address. It also defines the type and some label and descriptions about them. And at the very bottom here, you'll see a run function, just like you would see in a Node.js code step. That's because they're one and the same. Pipedream knows to call the run function when it's, it's this step's turn to run the component. The same goes for sources. So actions are steps after the first step, which triggers the workflow, right? So under actions is where we will see all of these actions that you'll be able to create or do things. And then under sources, how we can trigger workflows to run. So we could see a source here for a new order. And this is what listens to new orders on Shopify and then causes the workflow to run when a new order is found we can see the same structure. There is a key, there's a name, defines the type as a source, and there's props and a run function. So when we go back to Pipedream and look for the trigger for Shopify, for example, look under Shopify and we can see that there is a new order source. We'll click our Shopify account, create a source, and we just use that component code from the public registry in our workflow. So under the hood, all pre-built actions, all pre-built sources are components. And when you're running node code, you're actually defining components yourself. They're just quick and dirty on the go components. In future videos, we're going to learn how to create our own components for the registry or for reuse within our own private account or team account. But I just wanted to unveil the magic behind Pipedream and how underneath the hood, it's actually all one API for you to use to create sources, actions, or Node.js code steps. It's all the same component system.